Good evening and welcome to Altos, your weekly Catholic news program here on Trinity TV. I'm Neil Parsonlal. Here are some of this week's top stories. The Catholic Commission for Social Justice joins calls for a thorough investigation into the Tobago oil spill. It also wants transparency in the release of information to the public. Father Trevor Nathasing leads a pilgrimage of parishioners of St. Paul's RC in Kuva to Erin and tells Altos that there is need for Roman Catholics to revive the rich traditions of their faith. The annual series of parish Lenten retreats began earlier this week. We will take you to one retreat in the Central Vicariate. And later we have on set economist Dr. Marlene Atz, who returns to discuss the environmental and economic implications of the Tobago oil spill. And now for this week's top story. The Catholic Commission for Social Justice, the CCSJ, has expressed profound concern and sadness over the recent oil spill along the coast of Tobago on February 7th. In a statement, the CCSJ called for a thorough investigation and transparency in the release of information to the public. In the spirit of the Pope's encyclical Laudato Si, the CCSJ reminded of the responsibility of being stewards of the environment, highlighting the vulnerability of marine life and the delicate ecosystem in the wake of the spill. The event, the CCSJ said, emphasized the importance of adopting more sustainable energy practices and reinforcing regulations that safeguard natural resources. There is also a need for a comprehensive review of marine policy and practices and greater international collaboration to ensure effective implementation of and adherence to policies. The statement said the pursuit of sustainable and environmentally conscious practices is not only a moral imperative, but essential for the well-being of present and future generations. Roman Catholic priest Father Trevor Nathasing is advocating that Catholics use the season of Lent not just to return to God, but to bear witness to others that the Roman Catholic faith is alive and well. Father Nathasing led a pilgrimage of parishioners of St. Paul's R.C. in Cuba to Irene last Sunday, and in an interview with Catholic News Altos, said Lent must be used as a time to recapture and revive rich Catholic traditions for the good of the nation and the nation's youth. We have more in this report from Rosemary Sant. Parishioners from Kuva journeyed to Erin last Sunday for a day of prayer, praise, fasting and worship under the guidance of parish priest Father Trevor Nattersing. It was the first time many in the parish had gone outside of the parish for fellowship and prayer on the first Sunday of Lent. We adore you, o Christ, and we bless you. Because by your own cross you have redeemed the world. Father Natas Singh said he started this first Sunday of the Lent pilgrimage more than 30 years ago. The idea, he said, had its genesis in a visit to Miami. They would take everybody to a different area for the first Sunday of Lent as a means of embracing the sacrifice and, and, and doing something different as a parish. So I brought it in when I came back to the, to the, for the following year in San Grande. And I've been doing it every year that I've been since then. So it's more than 30 years now I'm doing it. He explained the significance of parishes going outside to be witnesses and to let people know that Catholicism is alive and well. Just to do this outside of the normalcy of the parish that we're in, so to get everybody on board with this so that we could make this day of sacrifice together for ourselves, for our families, for the parish that we are in, for the communities, for the nation. Father Nattersing said it is important for people to understand the need to turn back to God. I think we have lost this, you know. You, you can't distinguish what is Christmas anymore from what is Carnival or what is Lent. Everyone flows into the other. Not that it's bad per se, but I think humanity needs to understand that there are certain times in life when we need to do different things. And Lent is that time in our rich Christian tradition when we are reminding our people, reminding the nation, reminding the faithful, that we need to slow down, we need to recollect ourselves, we need to remind ourselves who we are. We are not an end in ourselves. We, you know, we need God and we need to return to God. 
He observed that while people spend big money to go on pilgrimages to Europe, there is a lot that people can learn from just visiting different parishes locally. This, he said, is also important to encourage young people to know their faith. But it's important for us to recapture again all of these rich traditions that we have, to bring it alive to this new generation so that we understand that we're not just existing in a vacuum, but we have a long tradition with us. Praying and singing, the parishioners of Kuva gathered inside the St. Francis of Assisi Church in Erin for praise, worship, prayer, and Mass. Marceline Peters from St. Anthony's Point 14 encouraged the faithful to understand the importance of prayer and faith and trust in God. There is nothing that God can't do. There's somebody here in this church who feels that God is not going to listen. I am telling you now that God is listening to you. That God says he wants to move you from where you are and to bring you into his light. There is someone here who has so much doubt because of all that they've gone through. But God is going to move that mountain for you. The day's visit to Erin for the parishioners of the St. Paul's RC ended with the celebration of Holy Mass. One of the popular practices of Lent is the Stations of the Cross. The Stations of the Cross, also known as the Way of the Cross or Via Cruci, commemorate Jesus' passion and death on the cross. The first outdoor Stations of the Cross at Santa Rosa R.C. Church Arima for Lent 2024 was held last Friday on February 16th. The procession took the small gathering of faithful from the church to the Holy Cross Chapel on Calvary Hill. It is expected the turnout will increase weekly during the Lenten season. And if your parish community has organized the stations, whether inside the church or outdoors, why not make an effort to participate as one of your Lenten sacrifices this year? The annual series of parish Lenten retreats across the Archdiocese began on Monday, February 19th. And in every Altus edition during the course of Lent, we hope to take you to one such retreat in a different vicariate. This week, we sent videographer Barry Sideno to visit the parish of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Caripichaima in the Central Vicariate. The call that is given to each one of us is indeed to recognize that God has need for us and that each one of us is indeed valuable in the eyes of the Lord what is given to us today is to recognize that the one who is placing the demand on our hearts is indeed giving our lives new meaning he calls out to us to join him in his work to join him in the conversion of the world so that we might be given new horizon and a definitive direction. Lent to attend a retreat. You can visit catholictt.org or pick up a copy of the Catholic News for a listing of all the retreats throughout all the vicariates. And Catholic News Alto spoke with a few young people from St. Paul's in Kuva who were on pilgrimage in Erin as to their expectations for Lent 2024. Let's hear them. My primary expectation is a renewing and a refreshing of the Holy Spirit in my life. Hope that while I continue to listen, I get to know how to be bold and improve serving God. I try to be better in my faith. By hearing the 
carry me throughout the throughout the lantern season every week. It will carry me throughout. So I just hoping for a, a sign, a message to carry me throughout the week. I am hoping to get some more motivation to develop my relationship with God. And last Saturday, we learned of the unfortunate passing of Dominican priest Father Leo Cornelius Donovan, who died peacefully in Ireland. Father Leo, as he was affectionately known by faithful, returned to his native Ireland after retirement, residing at St. Mary's Dominican Priory, Talgot, Dublin, Ireland. He served for five decades in Trinidad. He was ordained to the priesthood on July 9, 1967, and came to Trinidad one year later. He retired in late 2016, an ephemeral mass was held on May 29, 2017 at his last parish, St. Anthony's Church in Pitti Valley. Among the other parishes he served in were Santa Rosa, Arima, and Tunapuna. We pray God's blessings on his soul. The funeral mass of Father Leo was celebrated on Wednesday, February 21st, followed by burial in the St. Mary's Dominican Priory Cemetery. It's time now for us to take a short break. And when we return from the break, we welcome back to the set again one of our favorite guests, Dr. Marlene Atz, to examine the economic fallout from the Tobago oil spill. Stay with us, but let's see if you can get this week's Catholic trivia question. Welcome back after the break. This evening, we talk with Dr. Marlene Atz, one of our favorite guests here on Altos. But she's not here to talk about the budget. She's here to talk about the economic and environmental concerns emanating out of the oil spill in Tobago on February 7th. Very, very important discussion. Marlene, welcome again to the set. Thank you, Neil. It's, Thanks. It's always, it's always good to have you. I'm good to be here. Good to be here. It's good to have you. Marlene, the the environmental spill on April, on February 7th. There's lots of, of discussion about who's to blame and whose ship it is and all that, that sort of thing. We leave that for other people to, to, to discuss Absolutely. because there's so much you know, uncertainty there. The concern is the environment and that there's an immediate concern about the environment as well as the economic implications mm -hmm. of this environmental oil spill. Walk us through those. All right, thanks again for the opportunity to be here and to, to share some, some knowledge in terms of what my take is and what the information out there is. So yes, February 7th, we learned of an oil spill, of a spill of a some spill. kind of material, um, some kind of hydrocarbon material in Tobago's waters. And there's been a lot of conversation, a lot of bacchanal, you know, we like a little bacchanal mm -hmm. kind of element to everything around it. But I welcome the opportunity to have a chat about the economic and the environmental. As you correctly said, there are immediate environmental impacts. So the mangroves, the fisheries, the coral reefs, all of those things that we've come to associate with Tobago and its beauty and mm. the reason why we go there, yes. why visitors go to Tobago. Clean, green, and serene. That's absolutely sun, sea, sand, but the, the perfect, almost idyllic spot for you to go on a vacation. And those are going to be impacted. So there is going to be a significant environmental impact, some of which is already surfacing, mm -hmm. um, no pun intended, yeah. given that the oil we're dealing with. But what I also want us to be cognizant of is that there is also an economic and yes. social impact behind that. And, and it's the perfect storm, as it were, for us who, who speak about sustainable development and sustainable development really covering economic, social, and environmental issues. Yes. And this kind of brings it to the fore for us, and it's a learning opportunity for us in Trinidad and Tobago. For persons who didn't know, 45 years ago, this also happened in Tobago. So in 1979, Tobago had a significant, a far more significant oil spill experience. Two, I think, two vessels collided, and it was a significant mm -hmm. amount of oil based on the history that we found. But coming back home to the economics, I just want to highlight a couple of things. And this is based on a situation report that I received. It was dated the 19th of February. So it's essentially fresh news fresh from news, one of the yes. key partners. I want to thank um, the ODPM and its, its um, Major General Rodney Smart for providing me with the information, because I felt in terms of my own teaching mm -hmm. at the university, it would be remiss of me not 
to bring this information into an academic space mm -hmm. so that students could kind of understand what is happening and, and learn something from it based on what and we're it, teaching. And with, they, with real time and absolutely, real Absolutely. I think it's important. So I was telling them, telling some of my students that they're very fortunate. They've experienced two disasters, so COVID and now the, the Tobago oil spills, so that we can actually use it to actually marry what we do in academia with what is actually mm -hmm. happening on the ground. So from an economic perspective, a couple of things I want to flag. One, where the oil spill has occurred is essentially in the southwestern part of Tobago. So That's Scarborough, right. Crown Point, Lowlands, some of those areas yeah. that we are very familiar with because that's where we go that's on holidays. Go yes. That's where you go and that's where you find the bulk of Tobago's hotel plant. So when you mm -hmm. say you're going to Tobago, that's really where you're going. Essentially, Tobago, that's where you're going. That's where you're going. Mm -hmm. And we're going into the Easter holidays mm -hmm. soon. And where do people go if they decide not to go to Mayara? They go to Bago for Easter. Yeah. And Stoby, then they go precisely. Lowlands, and so, precise, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that is the area based on the situation report that I received where the oil spill occurred. So there is going to be some residual in terms mm -hmm. of the impact in that area. I don't know. As of today's date, I don't know about the, the bathing quality in terms of the water quality, et cetera, et cetera. And I do know that there is an intention to interview a colleague of mine who will speak more to the environmental issues. So I will just touch on some of those today. But essentially making the point that Tobago's concentration of tourism mm. is in the area where the spill has occurred. And I know in terms of one of the, the remedial measures that the THA and its partners, the ODPM, the IMA, et cetera, the Ministry of Works, they've put booms, what they call booms, booms. to essentially absorb Contain, some of yeah. the oil. What they're trying to do is now to protect the port where the large cruise ships come in. So they're trying to mitigate mm -hmm. any impact because large cruise ships will not necessarily want to dock, which will have a spin-on effect of in course. terms of the tourism trade for Tobago. So you're talking about local tourism, you're talking about domestic, you talk, domestic, sorry, and international, international tourism, tourism in terms of the cruise yes. ships. So we really have to mitigate and look at those issues. So that's one issue in terms of the tourism sector. Agriculture and fisheries. An oil spill is going to impact right. on your marine life, including we are in that season where everybody wants to consume fish. It's your feel-good thing for Lent. You know, you consume fish. How is that spill going to impact on fish that we might have imported from so, Tobago? So, so the prices that already go up during Lent. The prices are, going are already to go last further. time I checked were like forty dollars a pound for one kind of fish. It is likely to be exacerbated. Even, more even, now. even if it is not a real impact that it's that there is a shortage but there is going to be the perception yes. and it is going to drive the price up so we also have to look at that and the impact mm -hmm. it has on persons um, the transportation sector as i said the fact that many fishermen operate in that area in fact i think from the report i received fishermen were the ones who first observed mm -hmm. the material on the water and they then alerted the authorities fishermen aren't going to be able to work they're not going to be able to take their boats out there because who knows what damage the material may cause to their boats. Glass bottom boats that we jump on and go to Tobago to look at marine life in the Boko Reef, etc. All of these uh, impacts, the full extent of which we do not know, but there will be an economic cost associated with it. And from the social side, it is my understanding that two schools have had to be closed yes. because they're in the vicinity and you don't want a poor air quality. Lambo and Discovery. Precisely. The Lambo um, primary, primary school and a secondary school. school. We don't want the air quality to impact on persons in terms of people who might have asthma. asthma. But in, in any yeah. event, one of the things that you read about when you look at the oil spills is that there are health implications from ingesting the toxins containing mm -hmm. whatever the hydrocarbon mm -hmm. substance might have been. So apart from the hardcore environmental issues in terms of the mangroves being impacted, the fish stock, the marine life being impacted, the impact it might have on the coral reefs in terms of the, the environmental impact themselves, they are associated with these economic impacts, mm -hmm. which I have to say some of my students are able to provide support on in terms of the environmental valuation right. of these issues. But they are th these are issues that we have to look at separate and apart from the oil spill itself. Yes, but in terms of that valuation, that economic mm -hmm. value, what is the cost? What is the economic cost? And we know it's, it's an immediate cost. Mm -hmm. But if we were to cost this oil spill to the economy of Tobago or the, economy, the national economy, what are the numbers we look at? I know it's speculative, but what are the numbers we're looking at? Well, well I've, I've not done the numbers per se, but we'll have to look at the cost of if you see a shortfall in your tourist arrivals, mm -hmm. 
persons who will either stay either in the formal hotel sectors, the bed and breakfasts, the fact that some persons might have a room in their house or might have put up an apartment, Airbnb. and that is income, precisely, that is income that is foregone. foregone. Because a tourist might then decide, let me skip Tobago this year and go somewhere else. That is income that is foregone. There is a direct impact in terms of the fish stock fishermen who let's say they they earn let's say two three thousand dollars a week and this is speculation i'm not wanting anyone to go out there and say that dr at say earn two three thousand dollars a week from fishing but if you earn two three thousand and you employ persons mm -hmm. there is a spill on effect in terms of persons who become unemployed if you were a fisherman who had a contractual obligation to provide fish to a restaurant or to a hotel yeah. as the case might be that is income that is foregone those two schools that we mentioned there is now possibly an education Indeed. deficit in unless of, they've, in, in they've been able the, unless they've been loss. able to accommodate to be accommodated in other schools mm -hmm. or they've transitioned to online all of these are things for which we can find direct costs mm -hmm. but also indirect costs as well and then there is of course the air, the air quality the environmental impact um, one of the things that that i've learned about oil spills is that it takes a very long time it does. for the environment to regenerate itself. So we have to value. There is a value that mangroves mm -hmm. provide for us in terms of air quality. The so they're not just feet. there. You know, there is a biological mm -hmm. function that they provide that can be costed. I mean, we all suffered. I myself suffered from Sahara dust. We mm -hmm. now understand that these environmental impacts okay. have human health impacts, which of course then have economic impacts okay. that we can put a dollar value to. So this is not something that is insignificant. Mm -hmm. And certainly not something that warrants the amount of bacchanal that I see surrounding yeah, it. It is a serious issue yeah. for us in Trinidad and Tobago, more so for Tobago. And this is why I welcome the opportunity to come and yes. have a chat. The, the Catholic Commission for Social Justice has, in fact, that was the, the, the story we led with yeah. this, this, mm -hmm. this afternoon, that they are calling for a thorough investigation in, you know, into, the, into the entire thing. But investigations usually point out blame. Who's to blame? Yeah. Who ship it was? Who, who was at fault? But the the investigation into what you were talking about yes. today to me you know seems not not to trump yes but certainly to, to be very high on yeah. the list of what we need to be doing because there are lots of hidden costs that you have identified absolutely and i think once it dust settles and it's not so much of a of a hot topic in terms mm -hmm. of the bacchanal um i would in fact be reaching out um to provide at least some support and as I said, we have some students who are still in the learning phases, but I think it would be a golden opportunity for us to marry our students' learning with a practical example and try to, prof to provide support at the national level in terms of how do we move forward from this and learn some of the lessons. But so, so we speak of the, the impact, social impact, the economic impact, the environmental impact. Perfect storm, you, you, mm -hmm. you said. What are the lessons to be learned from this exercise? You well, said this happened 45 years ago. Yeah. Have we learned anything? Did we learn anything? Well, I wasn't intimately involved ha, 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 45 years ago in terms of it, but I think certainly it is a lesson in disaster mitigation, not because it has not happened in a lifetime doesn't mean we ought not to prepare for it, because one of the things that we learn is that one disaster can actually destroy an economy and we would not wish for that to happen. So the same way in which we look at hurricanes and we think about floods, this is a man-made disaster, um, as opposed to the natural disasters right. that, that are hurricanes, et cetera, et cetera. And I think because it has not happened for a long time doesn't mean that we should not anticipate marine waters. I mean, and this shows, you know, we're still trying to figure out where the barge came from or whatever, what, what, you know, all the details around it. But we really need to focus a lot on disaster preparedness preparedness mm -hmm. and to understand the risks that we to which we were exposed mm -hmm. and to put mitigation measures to reduce the impact to and reduce to reduce our impact. vulnerability yeah. to those. But 45 years ago we did not have the ODPM. <laughs> no we yes. didn't. So that's a that's a that's, that's a, a start, in, yes. That, that's and a we start, didn't have TEMA, so, so, so at least we're, 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 in, a we're, we're in a better position now and to pull to resources that. together to address yeah. the situation. Doctor As we want to thank you again for coming in very and as you usually do breaks it down for us very, very simply so that even I could understand you know what what this is about. You're most welcome. Anytime. We thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you again Absolutely. soon on this set. Yeah? Absolutely. All the best. Take care. That was Dr. Marlene Atz who joined us today to talk about the economic implications of the Tobago oil spill. We take a short break and we'll be back with you shortly. Altos, from the Latin altos, meaning high. Every Friday night we feature the top news items hot off the press.
we are taking a leap of faith on Trinity TV. Jump in with us for this new and exciting experience. For the season of Lent and the remainder of 2024, the Archdiocese of Port of Spain, also known as Catholic Titi, will embark on deepening the prayer life and fostering hope among locals through a series of activities. Catholic News Altos Andre Burton has more in this story. We must understand for Lent the rituals of mortifying the body, rituals of prayer that we enter into, rituals of almsgiving that we do. Let us make this Lent very special. There's, there's several different things you can use to make the, this, the Lent special. Catholic TT is going to be doing stuff all Lent to help you to remember and to keep it special and to keep it fresh. Our prayer intention this week teach right from wrong lord we pray to have the courage to act quickly when we need to make sure our actions are right and pleasing in your eyes we ask you to give us the wisdom to know when to act quickly to do the right thing when we can avert disaster whether at home or across the world show us how to act wisely when we can stop others doing the wrong thing, whether in our families, churches, workplaces, or communities, Lord, give us the courage to step up and speak. When we need to do the right thing that goes against the norms of today, give us common sense and integrity. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your wisdom that you give to those who ask. We ask you in advance to give us wisdom when needed. Fill us with humility and courage to do the right thing quickly. Amen. We look forward to being steadfast in prayer with Catholic TT community. In May this year, the Catholic News will be creating history when we host our inaugural 5K Fun Run and Walk at the Queen's Park Savannah. Runners and walkers of all backgrounds, ages, and fitness levels are invited to participate in this unique event, which is entitled Steps of Hope. With the Jubilee Year 2025 fast approaching and the theme being Pilgrims of Hope, this 5K is a precursor to the activities and events scheduled to celebrate the Jubilee. The Steps for Hope 5K Run Walk is scheduled for Saturday, May 11th at 4.30, starting and ending opposite Archbishop's House in Port of Spain. This event promises to be filled with fun for participants and a medal for all registered finishers and giveaways. Whether you're Catholic or non-Catholic, a seasoned athlete or a casual jogger, all are welcome to, jo to join in the 5K. Cash prizes will be awarded to the top three male and female finishers, as well as special prizes for parishes and schools. Registration has started at baffasports.com, and you can read more about this, this race in this week's edition of the Catholic News. So mark your calendars, gather your friends and family, and register for the Steps of Hope 5K Fun Run Walk in May. I'm sure the entire Altos team, including the, the entire Catholic News, Raymond, Simone, all of them, and possibly myself, will join in taking part in this event. Look forward to it. Here's a look at this week's coming events in the Archdiocese. <laughs> And Catholic News Associate Editor Simone Delochan gives us a sneak preview of what's inside this week's Catholic News. Our Lent supplement in the upcoming issue of the Catholic News provides you with weekly reflections, prayer, and a visio divino to add it to your Lenten prayer life. Read these and more. I am Simone Delochan, Associate Editor of the Catholic News. And we thank you for tuning in this evening to Altos as usual. We leave you this week with some of the music ministry at the Lenten Retreat in Caripe Chima, which we showed earlier in the program. Why not join in if you know the songs? See you next Friday. And remember, have a happy and holy Lent.